Hey everybody, this is Mark from Video Games Wondercast. Um, today we are playing a new game. Uh, it's Total War Three Kingdoms. Uh, it's part of the Total War series. If you're unfamiliar with those, it's a um, what are they? What do they call them? Nine X, Nine X, or something? Strategy game. Basically, big giant strategy game where you um, control a whole kingdom and you can fight battles um, like Civilization. Civilization is one of these types of games. Um, so this is a more uh, battle, nitty gritty battle focused game than Civilization is. But it's also got the um, it's got the intricacies, some of the intricacies that Civilization has. You can um, make alliances break alliances and anything in between so on and so forth um so uh let's get into the thick of it let's uh let's start a new campaign here uh so this is set um during the romance of the three kingdoms era which i don't know the years of when that was but if you're familiar with dynasty warriors um there's also a series of games that's popular uh i don't think they've released one in the west in quite a while but uh, there's a series of games called Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and this is Romance of the Three Kingdoms is a, uh, I think it's a Chinese uh, epic or a book, I guess, that um, tells the story of like this time period and has all these famous generals in it. So if you've played Dynasty Warriors, you might be familiar with this guy right here. Um, I think in Dynasty Warriors he pronounces his name Cao Cao. Um, and then there's, uh, his son is Cal P, which was always pretty funny, uh, to us when we were playing. If anybody watched X-Play, they had a fun reaction to playing Dynasty Warriors on PlayStation 2, and, uh, they just kept repeating the audio file of the Cal P character saying, I am Cal P, over and over and over, and it's pretty funny, and I'm probably dating myself with that, um, uh, you might not even know what X-Play was. Um, you see, back in, uh, n never mind, I'm not going to get into it, but, Cow Cow, um, let's see if there's another famous one, uh, you can't play as him, but another famous character from this was Lu Bu, uh, he was always, like, the big, big bad or big hero, I guess, in the Dynasty Warriors games, um, so there's Cow Cow, Lu Bu, and all these guys, um, so, this is basically picking a faction, let's pick... Let's see, Cao Cao, I think is actually pronounced Tao, Tao Tao, with like a more of a T, T sound. Uh, so I'm going to call him that, but, you know, I don't know how to pronounce any of these names, so if I offend anyone, I am very sorry. Uh, Alright, so we've got Yuan Shao, Yuan Shao, um... All of their starting situations are normal. If you can see down here, it's a starting situation. This guy's easy. Coalition. Oh, there's... Oh, this is like just one... One option. Oh, look at this. We got... What do we got? Coalition. This must be... This must be uh, better understood if you have if you're familiar with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms story. So I guess this is this is a the members of I guess a coalition in that story. These guys are governors, master scholar, gentleman of the Han, Ma Ting, protector of the West, and then there's outlaws. Ooh, whoa! Check her out, bandit queen very hard oh that's pretty dope i want to be the bandit queen but i also don't want to play this game for like the second time and have a very hard starting situation and then i think yellow turbans uh part of that book is the yellow turban rebellion is a, is a big deal and again if you've played dynasty warriors the yellow turban rebellion is always the first level of every dynasty warriors game so it looks like playing as the Yellow Turban guys, that's the that's the first DLC, launch DLC they put out, so. Um, dang. Bandit Queen looks pretty dope. 
let's not let's not get too crazy though. So let's start as one of these boring guys. This guy's not very boring. He's pretty cool looking. Uh, he's pretty cool looking. Sun Jian, Tiger of Zhang Dong, the Iron Fist General. Um, ambitious power monger. Oh, okay. You know what? Screw it. I'm being. I'm doing the Bandit Queen. I can't resist. All I am has been earned and fought for, not given. Okay, so. Dynasties and nobility mean nothing to Zheng Jiang. She prefers to seize glory in her own way. Okay, so they all have a different backstory. They all have different characters in their life, and you can appoint these characters to different positions, so on and so forth. This is their retinue, I think it's called. Or no, 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 that's special. Special characters they can... Or special units they can make. And then special buildings they can make. A bandit lair. I like this. Alright, faction specialization. Infamy. Infamy instills respect in your enemies and measures the success of your exploits. Increases prestige, increases character experience, character satisfaction. Infamy decreases over time. Playstyle focus. Aggressive expansion. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is this is the map. Uh, this is the main bad guy, I think. Dong Zhuo. These guys. I don't know if they're my enemies or my friends, but here's me. I guess that red part is me or something. I don't know. Uh, champion. Best use. This so this her character class is champion. Best use to engage enemy generals. However, weaker unit, weaker against units. Best group with retinues. So your generals can have these uh, duels, basically. Oh, I guess I can switch between the outlaw characters. China is people, not its oppressive warlords. I I'm being hurt. Mercy cripples ambition and makes excuses for tyranny. Dope. So dope. And nobility mean nothing um, all right, let's do this. So I'm playing in romance mode. In romance own. mode is a little bit more like like how the book, I guess, or the story tells it. Uh, generals ride into battle as single. They're not tied to a certain unit. They're super powerful. Larger than life abilities. Adds a parallel layer of character versus character combat in which generals must take bold action to prevent enemy characters from devastating friendly units. So basically they're like hero class hero classes. Um, generals can engage in heroic duels. And all the other characters will like stand around and watch, which is pretty cool. As they increase in rank, they'll become increasingly resilient. Only what once would have killed them would only wound them. And then records mode is a more traditional, like, realistic take on um, ha uh, co the battle system. Uh, besides the general stuff, I think the, the battle system remains pretty much the same. Uh, battle realism mode. No. Auto save to cloud. Show AI player moves. Time of day. Default. Advisor help. High battle difficulty. Normal, normal. Okay. Alright, let's do this. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. I don't know what a lot of that means. Let emperors die. Let dynasties fall. Zheng Jiang will rise like the mighty cypress tree. All of China is for the taking. She will claim it. Cool. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion 
This horse. This horse's face right here. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. Okay. Yellow Turban Rebellion got got destroyed. Story beat number one. I guess. Alright, moving on. What's the next story beat here? One of four, I see. Chung Jiang, I think is how she said it. Chung Chung. Yet despite the victory, the chaos only grew. With the corruption at the very heart of the empire. Ooh, sorry about that, folks. Hit my mic. Stormed the imperial palace and killed the ten eunuchs, the source of China's ills. In the madness, the warlord Dong Zhuo seized the emperor. With the great warrior Lu Bu at his side, none dared oppose him. Okay. Next. In response Whoops. to Dong Zhuo's brazen display, treason, some call it, a coalition of warlords rose up, led by the charismatic Yuran Shao, to save the Han. Faced with united opposition, Dong Zhuo retreated west to his stronghold of Chang'an, raising the old capital Luo Yang to the ground as he fled. This guy's. He's a bad dude. Now the year 190 CE. And okay, the there's the year. Has all but collapsed. Coalition's collapsed. Warlords on all sides have seen opportunities to build their own fortunes from the chaos. Yellow turban remnants still stalk the lands, seeking the age of the yellow sky, whilst soldiers of fortune feel the change of fate on the wind. And strike out on their own. The scales shift, and China hangs in the balance. Sorry, doing a little mic adjusting here. Okay, so there's there's the story of what's happening at this time in China. I guess in the story of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which I guess is true. I mean, I think these are all real. Like that's a real thing. I think. I don't know a lot about Chinese history. The imperial capital lies in ruins, reduced to cinders. Guess that's that. Ha! Those noble fools tear each other to pieces. This is long overdue. Ooh, look at this guy. Dong Zhuo steals away with the emperor to the west. It must be Dong Zhuo. He will be wanted by all of China now. There will be infamy in helping destroy him. Yet it may be more fun to watch them fight. The yellow turbans rise up in every province, seeking retribution and freedom. The old ways are dead. The Han is collapsing. The people revolt, and the once mighty noblemen are powerless to stop it. The time to strike is now. China is vulnerable. Whilst those pompous dogs squabble for the throne, there is fame and wealth to be found amongst the buyers. Change is on the wind, Zheng Jiang. Seize the moment. Seize glory. Okay. That's me. Alright, establish your power. Make your way past the Han forces. Find a power base to build up your strength. Okay. Uh, chaos to thrive. None of the world have accepted you and none have welcomed you. Alliances may be temporary. Alright, so... Make your way past the Han forces. Find a power base to build up your strength. So this is my first mission. Bandit Queen of Revels and Destruction and War. Engage the following general's army in battle. Zun Yu. This guy right here. Han Empire. Alright. Han Empire's dying. Must hasten their end. I'll do it. Uh, so here's my missions tab right here. Uh, these are all your different... Well, some of your different uh, quick tabs. Missions. That's the one that just got... We just read. Characters... That's just characters that you know of in the world, or characters in, in your court. You have, uh, like, courts with different positions in court you can assign people to. Uh, here's my armies. I only have one. And my commanderies. I guess I have none at the moment. Or maybe three. I'm not really sure it said something like that. Ancillaries gained. Composite bow. 
Scholar, merchant. So these are things and people you can equip to your character to give them boosts. We already read that. We already read that. Bandits are less corrupt than nobles. So let's... Okay, so that's her unique weapon, the Red Sisters. Like all else. It's a pretty dope name for two axes. Uh, let's... Okay, so she is high in instinct and resolve. Very high in resolve. Health and damage. So I guess this lady's just like a brawler. So, cunning, cunning, expertise. Ranged damage, firewall mounted. What about this guy? Can this guy benefit from that? Okay, I guess he can't e- oh wait, accessories. Enables mounted fire while moving. Enables fire backwards. Uh, what is this guy? Sentinel? Locking down enemy generals or holding a choke point. Okay. Uh, what was that? Not equipable. Oh. In autumn's ending, we are reminded of new starts. Okay, I think I'll equip this guy to my main character. It gives plus 10% character experience if that character is the faction leader. So let's do that. Maybe. Alright, he's equipped. And I suppose... I... I guess we'll give her this bow, because it's like a legendary type thing, so... Um... Alright. And for now, let's just... Let's just attack this dude. Okay. Uh, looks like I am predicted to win this heavily. Let's do a quick save, just in case. I got 602 people, he's got 241. Let's just, let's fight this out on the map, just to show, show how it works. Uh, so yeah, this game's pretty cool. A little pre-battle banter. That's pretty, that's like a tradition in the Total War series. It used to be done on the battlefield in like a little cinematic before the battle, and it would get your guys all riled up, but they, they took that out in favor of this, which I don't mind. Uh, it just happens while it's loading, which I prefer. China will burn, <clears throat> but I will be remembered. This lady's like the Joker. She just wants to watch the world burn. She's like Heath Ledger. Look at that. It's Chinese Heath Ledger woman. Woman, female Chinese Heath Ledger. May he rest in peace. Okay. Okay, so this guy's got a bunch of archers. That's his whole force. Okay, well I'm attacking, so I've got to manage my deployment here. Uh, so this guy... So they're both fighters. They're both fighters. Um... And if, if you're familiar with Total War, this probably looks pretty familiar to you. You've got your battle map over here, you've got your characters. The big difference is your generals are, like, you know, big. And they each have retinues consisting of six units. So, like, this can be expanded out three more units, this little section here. Uh, I just don't have that many yet. Here's all your battle option buttons for that unit that you have selected. Like, if I switch to these guys, those buttons switch. Switch back to these guys, they switch. Switch there, they switch. And then it gives you a breakdown of. Uh, it gives you a breakdown of that class that you've got selected morale, toughness, melee, range, toughness, melee power. Uh, so let's see what we've got. These guys are hidden axes. 
Uh, okay, these seem like they have advanced deployment, means meaning that they can deploy beyond this green line. If you look on this mini-map, there's my deployment zone, and now we're inside of it, now we're not. And I can deploy these guys anywhere inside this zone here. And that's the enemy deployment zone there. But these guys, I can deploy up front in advanced deployment. See, I can move them anywhere. Uh, so, you know, I only units with guerrilla deployment ability can deploy outside your deployment zone. These guys have that guerrilla deployment. Uh, melee mode. It looks like they have... Oh, yeah, these guys have, like, bow and arrow, too. Which is pretty cool. So let's take a better look at them here. They got double axes and bows on their backs. That's a good look. These guys are cool. I like these guys. Uh, okay, let's bring that back. That's pretty dope. Alright. So, for them, we might as well deploy them as close as possible to these guys because they're just archers. They have poor melee and morale. I wonder if I put them here, if they'll stay hidden. How long they'll stay hidden. Um, besides that, I'm going to move my archers up front. These guys can just march wherever. Let's start. You have initiated the attack. Uh, yeah, I, I know. All right, so let's move up to right about. Oh wait, you know what? They are moving up on me. Yeah. So here they come, moving up on me. And if they get past my axemen, I can come in, bring them in behind them. I don't know why they would move up on me like that. So let's see their... So there's their archer range, that red semicircle. And it looks like I might have better range than them. Maybe not. No, probably the same. Uh, so basically I want all these guys to move up on them. At this point, I can circle, circle these guys back around the back of them. Why are these guys acting weird? So yeah, oh yeah. So we're getting hit pretty good. But that's what you get. I wonder if these guys are still hidden. Yeah, they're still hidden. Are they crouch walking or something? They're just... They're just... Hidden. They just can't be seen. I bet if I... I bet if I get them to run... They wouldn't be hidden. Alright, so these guys at this point need to run. Okay, yeah, these guys are already routing. Alright, so... I mean, this is obviously an easy, an easy fight. Let's get these guys on those guys. The rest of my dudes will take care of the archers. And I want her to kill this guy. Oh, down he goes. Alright. So their general is down. I'm guessing we won. Yeah, as victory. As you intend to keep talking. Wow, that was a really delayed comeback there. Alright. So let's just 
relax, claim victory. Okay, so that's how the combat system basically works, if you're unfamiliar with it. Yay, us. Um, it looks like we lost... Nobody? Did we not lose a single person? That can't be right. Maybe we lost a couple there, four there, five there. Because I think these all have 120 people in them. So, like, these guys are supposed to be 120, 120, 120, I think? So maybe we lost, like, 15 people? I don't know. If this would load faster... Ugh. I need an SSD. Oh, wait, I might actually have an SSD in this. Ooh, cool murder animation. Okay, so here's the remainder of three infamy. Cool. Uh, so, after a battle, you can ransom, see supplies, or recruit. My, mil my supplies are pretty low, and that's like when your bat army's out in the field, you want to keep your supplies high. So I think I'm probably going to see supplies here. Make way. I guess that kills the rest of the army. Taste of victory. Plus 30 military supplies. Plus 5 morale. Cool. Alright. You have as much claim to lead as any of these spineless nobles. My lady, now is the time to prove it. By capturing this nearby region, you can demonstrate both your martial prowess and your administrative potential. So I'm capturing this town right here that's blocked by these mountains all right yeah there it is glorious victory the survivors of this battle will run back to their separating masters and through feared whispers they shall know my name bonus experience cool all right uh so that's all of the things we just read I guess I can attack again. So you have a certain amount of movement, like action points to expend, and that's represented by like a movement circle, which I'm guessing is this like dark outline here. And I can get to that town. Whoops. Memo. What is this? Oh. I guess it's like a description or something? Or no, it's pins. I don't want to pin anything. Didn't mean to click that. Alright. Four eighty-one to five ninety-two. Okay. Um how many turns until they surrender? Six. Turns until supplies deplete one. Barricades two. Um, one cool thing is you can preview the map, the battle map, before fighting on it. So there's what the battle map will be. And the map is different depending on where you fight the battle, which is cool. Let's fight this puppy out. After this load screen. We must crush these insects. Okay. Let future generations tell of our glory here today. All right. Okay. Ugh. Oh, I need a new chair. My back hurts so bad. I'm sitting on one of those balance ball things. It sucks. Okay. All right. So here's a siege battle. Even well, this isn't really a siege. It's not a walled city. Uh, they do have defensive towers, but it's not a walled city. Uh, to win city battles, you can either capture the square in the middle, the main square, or route the army. So, um, let's see. Uh, I probably want to keep these guys. I guess I can't deploy them past the white line. 
they might be good to slip in a back door somewhere, so I might keep my main force up here. Where can I put them in trees? Thick trees almost all the way. Eh, that's not close enough. Ooh, yeah, this is good right here. So if I deploy them in these trees, they'll be hidden. I wonder if the towers can see them really easily. I bet, I bet they can. Either way, let's, uh... This is as good of a deployment as any. When you have this few, you know... This few forces. So at this point... At this type of battle, you, we're just gonna march... March right up to the door. These guys, let's see if we can sneak them into these bushes here. Or to this this these trees. Eh, these are more bushes. Well, oh, they're trees, I guess. So I wonder if they'll stay hidden. Yes, hidden, hidden. Our general needs our aid. Yeah, whatever, you're just getting shot with arrows, you're fine. So hidden, hidden, hidden. Yeah, still hidden. Okay. Maybe they'll be good to sneak all the way up through the gate. Or through the uh, towers. Make ready. Can't duel anybody. Heh, <laughs> so that bow and arrow I equipped on her is letting her shoot while she rides. That's pretty cool. I wonder if she's gonna get anybody. Let's, uh... Watch one of her arrows come in, see if it wrecks people. There's one. Yeah, there's one guy down. Alright, let's watch another one come in. Oh, dang! That's <laughs> That was, uh, like, five dudes. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. Alright. So we probably should engage now. I think she's... Yeah, she's fine. She doesn't have too many arrows. That little bar below her health bar... Right there, I think that's her ammunition. Alright. So I probably need to get these guys lined up here. Firing on these guys. And let's get our let's get our stealth unit sneaking in here. I wonder if they'll stay hidden. So they can go... Look, the enemy run. So yeah, let's get them there. And then we can run them up to the capital here. Uh, it looks like... My boys are... Breaking the breaking in the guys here. Adamant resolve, fifty melee evasion. Don't really need to activate that. That's that's one of this guy's special abilities. Let's see what she can do. Blinding fury. Oh, we won. Okay, well that was easy. Um, That's like a mini, like a little wimpy siege battle. Normally they're much more involved. I mean, it's the second fight of the game. I guess it's like training or something. Like a training battle. Yeah, we won. So I wonder if this faction acts like a barbarian, where you can... You just loot settlements... And you don't really occupy them. Well, no, there you go. It says occupy. So, in uh, in Warhammer, 
Total War, there were classes or armies that were just barbarians and you couldn't occupy settlements. All you could do was like raise them to the ground uh, and like loot them and stuff. Occupy. We worked hard to take it. We should enjoy it. Capture and occupy the following settlement. Support of the people. Cool. City's just beginning in my fury. I will become the name of the that the decadent Han fear to speak. Okie dokie. Uh, new capital has been established. So this is my capital now. Yay! I have a capital. Okay, saw that. Saw that. Mission issued. Construct or upgrade a building. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, let's leave it right there. Okay. Follow ambition. All right. So I've got 3,553 uh, China coins. <laughs> let's upgrade our town. That will take four turns. I wonder, I wonder if we can take this as well. Let's let our guys regenerate a little bit, and maybe we can recruit. And I think we leveled up. Yeah, one skill point down here. Okay, so Guile, 8, Cunning, Guerrilla Deployment, Chance of Ambush, Assignment, Reward, The Filial, and Incorrupt. 15 reserve reserves I don't know what reserves are uh, I like guile let's select guile okay uh, and we'll end our turn there now all the other dudes go My turn again, okay. So now I might recruit a few more units. Um, ancillary gained. Jade Horseman. Cool. I guess these guys don't like each other. Yeah, these guys don't like each other. <laughs> What do you wish, my lord? It's interesting. Appoint commanding general. Appoint this general to command the army. Stance. Open character details. Swapped retinue. Recall. Okay. Discard mercy to achieve ambition. We might want to go ahead and give this guy something. Yeah, his satisfaction is low, so we want to boost his satisfaction, so we'll give him this uh, little green horse. Maybe that'll make you happy. Does that make you happy? Are you happy now? Good. So the cool thing is you have a court, and this is like people that are like in your court. My faction heir... Zu losing 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 Lu Zang Zang Zung Zang I don't know. She's a rogue. This is all like like badass ladies. Oh she my main lady can get married? She's eligible for marriage. She doesn't seem like the getting married type, does she? I don't know if I'll if I'll marry her off. Unless it's to like some like 
crazy, like, Cal Drogo type dude or something. And even then, I think she would be, like, dominant, you know? She just seems... She's only 18 years old? Are you seeing this? This chick is 18 years old and she's a bandit queen. My god. Crazy. So how is this lady 25 and the faction heir? Is this like her mom? No, that can't be. That's not possible. She'd have to have had her six years old. <laughs> that's stupid. That's not... Disregard what I said. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's probably her girlfriend or something. That'd be pretty dope, too. Nope. No family. So it's got... A, it's not relation. Adopt? Marry? Huh. Okay, well, I want to, like, make this lady a general or a spy or something cool, you know? Alright. Um, Alright, so while we re recoup our losses, let's recruit here. So it costs a lot of money to recruit new generals, so I don't know if I want to do that yet. But let's recruit some guys. Dang, these guys cost sixteen oh nine. My gosh, and two twenty five upkeep. Ugh, I can't afford that. Um, I could probably use another spear. Let's check. Best used to engage enemy generals. However, weaker against units. Best group with retinues of spear infantry and glaive infantry. Alright, so we got... What about this guy? Serve, my lord? Best group with retinue of glaive infantry and melee infantry. Okay. Whoops. Bring me my spoils. Well... I guess we'll do some swordsmen. We really need another archer at least. And we could probably use some horse guys as well, but we're dangerously close to making zero money next turn, so let's not do that. All right, once these guys are all in our army, we'll we'll march right over to uh, this this guy here. Maybe we can take that settlement too. Oh, this is deserted. Cost an abandoned capital of the commandery. Right click to colonize. Cost 8,000. Yeah, we'd have to save up 8,000, so we'll have to wait to do that. Is that the Great Wall? How do I make this look? Okay, well, whatever. Is that the Great Wall? I thought it was like in the mountains. I thought it like ran through mountains and made like a. Maybe that's probably not the Great. Well, no, that looks very much like the Great Wall, doesn't it? All right. Anyways. Uh. Okay. So for now, let's see if we can make any diplomatic. Zhang. Yan. Sit down so we may talk. This is the other Repel guy. This guy should be our buddy. Trade agreement. Yeah, we want to make a trade agreement with you. Yeah, we'll give you 29, 29 coins to get a trade agreement, sure. We reached an understanding. Uh, so yeah, here's how that's how diplomacy works. So you like you open negotiations. Let wisdom shine with factions that you've encountered um this is their opinion of you and that'll change to like a little green mask if they like you or red if they don't like you uh it gives you a breakdown of why they do or do not like you and the projected change in attitude towards you here's like strength versus threat so these guys are e equal to me they're rich in money and very poor in food so maybe we can trade them like uh some food later on or something so here's the han empire and dong zhuo 
and these guys are obviously vassals of Dong Zhuo. So uh, here's a breakdown of their this these people's allies, their vassals, their trade partners, and the wars that they have. And there's ours. So here's all the different like things you can do. We can't do these yet. There's certain ones you can't do, I guess, because various reasons. Diplomatic. Military access. Non-aggression pact. Trade and marriage. Make payment. Request payment. War. Declare war. Don't want to do that. All right. As they fight side by side, your general's uh, bonds will... Okay, yeah. We don't, don't care. Basically saying your generals can become friends. Um, they, they basically grow more and more fond of each other, and that makes them fight better, and so on and so forth. Uh, all right. Next turn. Let's see what happens. In between turns. Okay. Uh, I guess there are... I think there are five turns per year. So each turn is like a... In a different type of like time of year. So now we're in the winter, obviously. Uh, so we're... Uh, we're still... We're still replenishing troops. So it looks like these guys are going to take three turns to be fully replenished. These guys are going to take four turns... I wonder why that is. You would think that when they're stationed in a town, maybe I just don't have the right buildings. Uh, maybe once I get this upgraded in two turns, it'll be better. Uh, but right now, I don't think I have the force. Uh, I've got, yeah, 52, 52, 75. I might wait one more turn before I attack these guys. Let's see what missions we have. Constructor upgraded building. That's the only mission we've got. Um, so yeah, we're just gaining money right now. Diplomacy hasn't changed. For now, let's just end that turn. Okay. Um, yeah, we're a little better stocked now, so let's, let's change our stance to Mar, uh, well, what happens if we, okay, so if we don't march, we can make it this far, let's do that, uh, actually, let's go this far, we can, hide. Oh yeah, it looks like we can take that, no problem. But we can't make it that far this turn, so for now, I guess we'll wait. Uh, looks like we have a, re a reform pending. So here's like the the level up tree path that you have in this game, and that's this is for your faction as a whole, I think. So it looks like we've already got regional overseers. Uh, minus 25 construction cost, military infrastructure. Plus 8 military supplies. Minus 2 mustering turns. Yeah, we might want to focus on military here. So let's start up that military tree. All right. And then I guess we want to look at our court, right? So here's people we can recruit into our court that are candidates, but we don't we don't really care about that right now. Uh Oh, well, uh, this guy's not very happy. Why is this guy not happy? Faction developments and events. Lack of purpose. Okay. 
All right, I don't really care what you what you want. All right. So for now, okay. All right, I constructed or upgraded the building. So I get a boost for three turns, minus 20% construction cost, minus one construction time. Okay, so I definitely want to construct stuff right now. Draws more warriors to her cause. Recruit and maintain a total the of... mountain is too high. It must be circumvented. Okay. Recruit and maintain a total of 12 at the start of a new turn. Current total, 10. So I need to recruit more. Okay, all right, for now I'm going to construct something to make me a little bit of money, I think. Plus 200 income. Yeah, we want that for sure. Let's do that. So minus one construction time. This would have taken five turns. Huh, okay. Remain all right, Han Empire. Tai Yuan Toolmaker. Push forward! With rough. Your warriors prepare for battle, but there are still other options. Encircling the yeah, yeah, I know. So you're basically, it's saying you can, you can encircle the encampment, starve them out, so on, so forth. Basically, just lay siege. Um, all right, let's do this battle. After this battle, I'll. Uh... Time to get to work. There's glory to be won have more money hopefully can you fight or do you just whine and complain jeez lady too much for me man scary All right, here we go. All right. So I think I can deploy her. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this map first. Lots of very pretty mountains in the background covered by fog. I wonder if that's just draw distance issues or if like you can on a clear day see that far. That'd be pretty cool. Weapons ready. Take these warriors. Oh yeah. These warriors attack. So basically this guy's This guy's people cannot deploy in a forward position, but her retinue of these units can. So I guess I'm going to